So what is read aloud? You will get basically six to seven paragraphs. So separate questions. You'll get six to seven of those questions. And in each of them, you'll have to read a paragraph, right? So the paragraph can be maximum of 60 words, right? Maximum of 60 words, right? And the skills that are being assessed over here is your reading skills and your speaking. So one, you're getting marks to reading and the other, you're getting marks to your speaking, okay? Now, this is a screenshot of what an exam question looks like. Now, before the audio start, uh, before you need to start speaking, you will get 40 seconds of preparation. Now, first thing first, in that 40 seconds of preparation, what should I do? No. Focus on words that I do. Now, re read the uh, one or just leave it and sit there? No, read the whole paragraph. Yeah. Read the whole paragraph. Now, when we're reading, are we going to read it softly in our head or loudly? It's a simple question. When we're preparing, when we're reading, are you reading softly in your head or loudly? What, what should you do? In your head. In your head? When you're doing it, what's the point of preparing in your head? When you're going to be reading, are you reading it loudly or softly during the actual? Yeah. yeah. So preparation means what? You're preparing, right? So when you're practicing, why would you practice softly? The issue is if, if I practice softly, am I, when I'm performing, am I performing it softly or loudly? Softly. loudly. Why would I practice softly? Got it? Yeah. So I need to practice as I will perform. So read this fast and loud. Why fast? Whenever I try to read something fast, there are going to be certain points of this where I will hesitate. That means those are the problems, problematic area for me. Whenever I hesitate in a word, what, is, what should I do? Stop there, read that word at least twice. Got it? Any part you hesitate, stop and read it twice at least. Okay, do not only skim through and read the hard words, all right? It's not about the hard words. Why? Because read aloud is not just based on one word. It's based on the whole paragraph. So it doesn't matter whether you misread is or you misread this. It's, the con it's contributing the same marks. There's no marks for, there's no weight, dif di differing, weight differences for each word. All of the words are weighted the same. So whether I lose is, is or arduous, doesn't matter. So why would I only focus on difficult words? Generally, you should be able to finish that in 30 seconds and you'll still have that 10 seconds remaining. In that 10 seconds, go through those or the words that faced. Understood? Go through the difficult words that you faced break them down and come up with the proper pronunciation. Now, question. Suppose I cannot read that word. Even if I'm breaking it down, it's still difficult for me. And I don't know the correct pronunciation, so I keep hesitating. Should I still read that word or should I skip it? You cannot. Generally, I don't know the correct pronunciation. So the recommendation is, even if you don't know it, break them and think what is the correct pronunciation. Whatever you think, read it as it is. Read it what you think. But every time I'm trying to read it, I'm hesitating. If I'm hesitating, then I'm not going to read. Understand? But if I'm not, even if I'm mispronouncing, I'll read it. Got it? For example, the word is yes. over here is arduous. Now, every time I'm trying, uh, trying to say arduous, I'm going, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, then don't read. All right? But if you can say arduous, 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 whichever is correct in your head, you read it, and if there's no hesitation, read it exactly like that, okay? But if you're hesitating, then skip that word. Now, same thing, One of you, so all of you said that this is the difficult word. So how can we read this? Break it, all right? And this strategy, you subconsciously always apply. Now I'm just bringing it up, all right? So this applies for every single word. Do not focus on whether it's correct or not. 
focus on what it sounds like by breaking them up. Whatever it sounds in your head at that point, that's the word. Don't think, okay, this is the wrong way. All right? Because you know, there's no one to fix that for you at that time. Understand? So whether you leave that word or you misread it, you're losing the same marks. But if I'm hesitating, I'm losing more marks because I'm losing marks in my fluency, not only in pronunciation, but also in fluency. So that's why recommendation is if I'm going to end up hesitating, I'll skip that word. Now, whenever we're speaking, we need to keep in mind a few things. So something called stress rhythm. Stress is important. Stress is what we refer to as intonation and rhythm is what we're referring to the flow, All right? So intonation and flow, these are the two things that we have to keep in mind. What is intonation? Intonation is whenever you speak, like your voice needs to have a high and low, right? That means whenever I think something is important, generally I emphasize that more. When I think something is a little less important, see the volume goes down a little bit. So you have that variation in your voice and that naturally happens to all of us, all right? So intonation is important. Why is intonation important? Intonation is important for your pronunciation. Why? Because you need to, whenever we, whenever we emphasize on a word, we make that word more clear, understand? That's why it's sometimes important to intonate on words so that there is word separation. Third thing, is, now the question comes about what should I intonate on? Now, most people think that I should emphasize on the important words. How many important words are here and how will I find what is an important word? Do I have time to think so much in the exam? When will I prepare if I keep thinking about important words, right? So what should I intonate? The difficult words? Yeah, now if you say adjective, now some people say we should intonate on adjectives. Some people say we should intonate on uh, verbs. Some people say we should intonate on nouns. Again, do I have the time to figure out which one is a noun, which one is an adjective, which one is a, yeah, no. So how can I, in that 40 seconds of preparation, figure out which one is a noun and intonate on that one? Generally, my recommendation is on the words that you're going to be most likely making a mistake or an error, right? So you should intonate on these things, plural words. Guys, on plural words, because you need to stress on the S. So if I say exists, if I don't say that exists, if I don't stress on that S at the end, the computer is going to pick it up as exists. For example, over here, it says that statistics. Now, if, if I don't emphasize on statistics, look at the word after that. What is it? Is. is. So the computer is going to do what? Statistics is. Now, I didn't emphasize on statistics is. I said statistics is. Computer is going to pick it up as statistics. Statistic is. Now, again, pronunciation is okay. Content is wrong. Got it? That's why emphasize on plural words. Emphasize on other things like past tense. This is another one that usually we muck up. Now, if the word was changed, if I say change, and I don't emphasize on that end part, will I get marks for content? No. Will I get marks for pronunciation? Yes, because change is a correct word. You read it correctly, but you didn't read the content word. The other few other things you can emphasize on is connectors. What are connectors? Any idea? Like the more over for the more. Over, furthermore, because generally they have a comma with it coming up always. Or, and if I don't emphasize on and, the issue is that, for example, remember the example I was giving you about Andorra? It sounds like I'm talking about the country Andorra. Mm -hmm. huh? So, but the word was and or a. Uh. I didn't say Andorra. You see? Now the computer is obviously not going to pick that difference up if I don't emphasize on and or a, uh. all right? So again, that's going to be a content related issue, not a pronunciation issue, okay? And our focus is obviously to maximize our content marks too. The other thing, so 
should we take micro pauses when we are reading, doing read alouds, or should we read it without any pause? Utilize those commas and pause, like full stops. Whenever we have a full stop, take a micro pause, breathe in, breathe out during those times. How are we supposed to read this? I'm going to give you a demonstration, and then we all, I want all of you to participate in the next one. All right? So the way I'm going to read this is, the development of easy to use statistical software has changed the way statistics is being taught and learned. Students can make transformations of variables, create graphs of distributions of variables, and select among statistical analysis all at the click of a button. Even with these advancements, students sometimes still find statistics to be an arduous task. Got it? All right. Now when you read, you need to have that, maintain that tone, all right? It needs to be a bit aggressive. You can't just be soft. You can't go like the development of easy to use statistical software has changed the way statistics and data learn. Students can make transformations of variable, create graphs or distributions of variables and select the monsters, all right? That will not do because you need to push out the words a little bit, all right? And the flow must be natural. Don't try to read it too fast. Don't read it too slow. What do I mean? Don't start reading this like the development of EGD statistics is about to change the way statistics have been taught in learning. Students can make transformation very well. Okay, graphs are distributed the way you write. Select the at the order, the clip button, how even with this element, students can still make. Now, I'll get fluent. fluent. What's going to happen to my pronunciation? All right. Now, pronunciation is unfortunately in uh, directly connected to your content. So when you lose marks for pronunciation, you're losing marks where? In your reading and listening as well. Got it? Right? So you need to balance out your fluency and your pronunciation. So we need to maintain a speed where I am able to read it clearly and loudly at the same time, have proper flow. All right? But I can't also at the same time read this like the development of easy to use statistical software has changed the way statistics is being taught. Okay? Got it? Yes? Now, to give you a clear indication, I want you guys to make notes of this, right? So, what is the appropriate time that I should finish? This will give you an idea on what is your, what is the level of fluency or um, how fast you should be reading and how slow you should be reading. So, in the exam, if I get four lines, four lines, write it down guys, please. If I get four lines, my target is to finish that below 30 seconds. I'm not going to try and hit the 30 second marks. I'm going to try hit the 25 and plus, 25 to 27. So if you have, yeah. lines, write it down. If you have three lines, three lines, target is 20 to 25. Again, am I targeting maximum or am I targeting near minimum? Minimum. Mm -hmm. Are you targeting 25 or 20. anywhere between 20 to 22 or 23? Okay, target the lower end. Don't target the higher end. Lower end. Yeah. If I have two lines, I should try to finish that. If I have two lines, I should try to finish that between 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, the reason why there's a range is obviously everyone doesn't have the same intonation. Everyone doesn't have the same flow, All right? So that's why there's a range. Because we can't be very strict that oh you need twenty two seconds you can't exactly do that, all right? And sometimes uh, sometimes you'll see certain words are a bit difficult to pronounce as well, so they might take a little bit of more time, all right? So that's why the range stay within that range you should get your ninety fluency for sure. 